I saw this article on, uh, oh, Jesus, did I get rid of it? Where is it? There it is. This fucking guy who's, in, who's evidently the 970th member of Guns N' Roses. And I know, even though I'm making fun of that fucking band, you know, I'm not even making fun of the band like the musicians think. It's just the fact that they're still calling it Guns N' Roses, right? That would be like if you, you bought McDonald's and you fired, you fired that fucking clown and you're still going, yeah. And you fired the Grimace and the Hamburglar and you got rid of Mayor McCheese. None of them were there anymore. But like, uh, I don't know, the fucking one of them, one of the Grimace stuck around. No, you know what? Ronald McDonald did because Axel is a fucking redhead. Um, <laughs> and you're still acting like it's this band of brothers. Whatever. So anyways, there's this article by um, the 9,000th guitarist and guitarist. The guy's DJ Ashba. And it says, DJ Ashba, Guns N' Roses guitarist DJ Ashba claims his aunt and uncle invented technology for aerosol cans. All right. Uh, Guns N' Roses and 6AM, Nikki Six's band, guitarist DJ Ashba was interviewed by Sweetwater editorial director Mitch Gallagher. Blah, 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 blah. Here's what he said. Ashba says, who owns a company centered around media and advertising that runs various other countries, was asked what takes him in those directions. He responds. Now, basically, they wrote exactly what he said. So I'm going to maybe fuck up the emotion of this thing. But basically, he said, you know, I don't know. I've always had that creative bone. My aunt and uncle invented the technology for aerosol cans. So ever since I was young, dot, 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 they came out with a product when I was really young called Pam. That's like a buttery spray. And I've always kind of grew up in that environment. I thought outside the box, and it really taught me that it's better to create your own job than to work nine to five. So that's what's always been my mindset. I just love creating. Ashba also talked about his belief that musicians should diversify and have a backup plan. He said, I absolutely will always stand by that. If you put all your eggs in one basket, all you got to do is drop them and they're going to break. And every one of them will break. But the whole thing, dot, dot, dot. And I've learned this from 6 a.m. bandmate Nikki Six. It's like you set up buckets you set up buckets, little incomes coming in there, 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 there. And as a whole, that's how you, you know, with this one, Jesus Christ, this is getting difficult. If three buckets aren't doing well this month, but the other ones are, you're going to be fine. So it's diversifying. But if you put all your eggs in one bucket and you have five months of, you know, things aren't going that well, that could spill all your eggs. Right? Now, what the fucking guy said in there, I'm telling you, is the key to freedom. And making your money work for yourself. So I'm looking at the comments, and everybody's just shitting on him. Next thing you know, he'll be telling us he invented whippets. Somebody wrote, so the fuck what? I guess that's some new cool way of saying what the fuck. And somebody wrote, and he invented huffing aerosol cans. Uh, I would like to salute Auntie and Uncle Ashba for making it possible for me to get high on the cheap during my turbulent and troublesome teen years. Uh... Buy a real shirt. So his aunt and uncle are responsible for the deaths of countless insects for screwing up the ozone layer and even worse for all the horrible hairstyles of the 80s. Congrats. Someone writes, this guy is the ultimate poser. It's it, it, everybody just shits all over him. Now, I don't think he really fucking meant aerosol. I think he just invented Pam. I don't know what. But in the middle of all that. He said some brilliant shit about how this guy's made it as a guitarist, right? But then he's starting these business on the side with the money that he's made. So if the next album doesn't do well, his business is doing well. And there's this thing in, in, you know, I found being a comedian, people always say that, Hey, you know, if you have a fucking backup plan, you're not going to go a hundred percent as a comedian. And I kind of bought into that after, you know, you know, early on, but the reality is, is you can make all this money as a comedian, as a guitarist, as whatever you're doing, but then you can take that money and start other shit. You know, I got this stupid ass podcast. I got some money coming in from the fucking advertising. I do my stand up. I got money coming in from that. And now I, I'm, I'm looking at, okay, maybe I'll, I'll take this money and go buy an apartment building and become a fucking slumlord. 
And then when I'm in like 70, if I own enough of those fucking things, I don't have to go on the road. Or people are just like, oh, he's that old freckled fuck. He's been talking about the same shit for 50 years. Fuck him. And I go back down to playing in front of 30 people. I can still do it because I love it, but I won't become destitute. And this guy is like giving you this information for fucking free. And everybody just shits all over him. I, I don't know. I found it really, uh, really inspiring. And um, a combination of that, and I also, um, I was reading this thing. I'm going to fuck up the guy's name. I think his name is Nick Offerman, that guy from that show, um, you know, where every Parks and Recs. The guy looks like an older uh, Zach Galifianakis. You know him? He's funny as fucking hell. He does a lot of voiceover cartoon shit. Why don't you just look it up, Bill? Because, you know what, I got my fucking hands full right now. I'm holding the recorder and I got my phone. But he had this great article, and I'm going to read this to you guys here. It said, what, what is the best advice you ever received? And he said, I had this amazing teacher in college, my sensei in the Kabuki Theater. And I thought that that was when the women, you know, fucking put on the makeup, right? And they gave you a hand job in the end? I have no fucking idea. Anyways, um, name Shozo Sato. I probably fucked up his name. For me, he was between Mr. Miyagi and Obi-Wan Kenobi. He told me to always maintain the attitude of a student. No matter how old you are, wake up in the morning and think, okay, how am I going to better myself? Am I going to improve my French? Am I going to give my wife a good back rub? <laughs> then you can go to bed having tried something. It's led to a life that is more fruitful than if you have the mindset of being a master. Once you think you're the master, then you grow bitter waiting for someone to throw you a parade because you're so fucking smart. He didn't say fucking smart, but... Those two things right there, right there. You know what I mean? I hope you got something out of that. I have no fucking idea. But um, that's the way you should go about it. If you play guitar, whatever the fuck you do, if you think that, yeah, dude, I'm the shit, then you stop growing, and then these young bucks run you down. I'm basically saying, people, that even though I can tell a shit joke at the level that I can, I never stop trying to find a, a, a better way to tell that shit joke. What if I squatted down and really tried to take a shit on stage? I mean, those are the kinds of things. <laughs> I'm making fun of it, but I really got inspired by both of those things. So there you go. Now, I can't always be sitting here on the podcast screaming cunt, can I?